Once again, I found myself sitting, looking at the top of my son's head, whilst he engaged in yet more online content. Like many other mothers, I asked myself, is this technology a good thing? What is it doing to our world? And what does it hold for our future? We live in a world that is more connected than it has ever been. Technology has cast a net over the whole planet, meaning that no longer are we just connected to those locally, we're connected to people on the other side of the globe. Not only is that net cast wider, but the detail goes deeper. We now get the most intimate insights into our fellow humans' lives. Whether that's a young girl in a war zone sharing raw emotion live, or our neighbour sharing what they had for lunch today, we now get the most intimate insight into our fellow humans' lives. We are all intrinsically connected, yet we feel more lonely and disconnected than ever before. We live in a world where we all have access to the same tools and the same information. If you want to learn something, you can find an online teacher offering free knowledge on pretty much any subject. Say you want to start a business, you can glean insights from all of those that have gone before you and set up a website which is effectively a global sales platform within days, if not hours. Technology's created a level playing field. We should all be more equal, yet inequality is on the rise. All around us, we're seeing strange things happen. To make ourselves feel better about it, we call it disruptions. But maybe this is the new business as usual. Take Airbnb. They have disrupted a whole industry. Now, the number one reason that people give for using Airbnb is that it's cheaper. But it's not. Studies into comparative pricing have shown that many nights in an Airbnb would have been just as economical in a similarly located hotel. Then there's Uber. They've changed transportation in many cities. More than that, they've changed the way that many of us travel. Even in times of austerity, more of us are hailing a ride because of Uber. Then you've got people like Elon Musk who persuades thousands of us to part with vast deposits for cars that he admittedly doesn't have the capacity to build. And we're seeing strange phenomenon in our politics as well. In a world that has spent decades fighting for freedom and unity, nearly 17.5 million Britons voted to leave in the Brexit referendum and over 62 million Americans voted for a man whose main campaign soundbite was, let's build a wall. When you take a step back from the media hype, this makes little sense. Wanting to understand what kind of world my children were going to grow up in, I went on a journey to discover what is really going on in the world. Why are we seeing so many big changes? Why do so many of us feel uneasy and uncertain about the future? Why are we so lonely when we're so connected? And why does the world appear to be getting more unfair? What I found was that most people like me could point a finger at technology, but we didn't really understand what that actually meant. However, there was a new breed of disruptive leader, and they seem to be operating under a different set of rules, using a different system. And when I dug a little bit deeper, it wasn't that they were tech geniuses. It was actually much more human than that. Once I started to decode what was really going on, everything became so much clearer. There has been a huge shift, something that I like to call the logic shift. What it's about is how we distribute our power and our perspective. We used to live in a world where we were predominantly managed by organisational power. So generally, the large organisations controlled most things that we did. Whereas now, as we've already mentioned, we've got this level playing field with technology. Individuals have just as much power as the large organisations. In terms of perspective, we used to live in a world where we only had, ind uh, only had individual power. We were connected to the people local to us. Yes, there were international news reports, but it just all felt so far away, so intangible. 
Now we live in a global world. These devices we hold in our hands give us that real insight into real life of other people. It's delivered by other people and so it feels real. And that shifted our perspective very much from local to global. So we've moved from a world of local organisational power to global individual. The best way to describe this is to use an example that we'll all understand. I'm using war. In the old LO world, if you wanted to start a war, what you needed to do was physically bring people together in one location, under the banner and organisation of an army. You fought side by side over the physical land that you stood on. In the new GI world, any one person can take a global perspective. That person can glean the knowledge to build and detonate a suicide bomb, and that one person can have a massive impact in the whole world. What we're all feeling is this shift from LO to GI. Take Uber. The reason that they've been so successful is because they've given their drivers the individual power to earn their own income, to be their own bosses. They've connected them to a global database of customers. And in doing so, they've empowered them to have their own income and have their own freedom. The technology has just done the enabling. See, in the world that we live, there's more opportunity than there's ever been. There's more tools and information at our fingertips that mean we can have the same opportunities. There's never been a better time for the average person, people like you or me, to rise up and make our mark on the world. But here's the thing. Most of us don't feel comfortable in this new world. The change has been so vast and happened so quickly that any feeling of opportunity has been drowned out by fear. And that's where the sea of logic comes in. Because we have a conflict between convenience and connection. We're being drawn up to the new GI world by convenience, but the fear and wanting to be back near our small connected world brings us back down to the old LO world. A few years ago, we used to hail cabs in a normal way, but now more and more of us are hailing an Uber, and we love the convenience that we can hail an Uber within a minute's notice. But we fear that the cab may be driven by an immigrant from outside our small connected community. We all want the convenience of being able to order something online within a few minutes and have it delivered almost immediately, but we hate that our high streets are dissolving in front of our eyes. At the beginning of the political campaigns, very few pundits actually believed that Trump would win or Brexit would come out on top. But understanding the logic shift, we can see how this might be the case. Because people wanted to regain that sense of connection. They wanted to feel like they were part of a smaller, safer, connected community again. But we shouldn't beat ourselves up. Because none of this is actually our fault. The problem lies in our biology. As humans, we are inherently lazy. Both our bodies and brains were designed to conserve energy, probably in case we needed it for the next hunt or in case we needed it for the onslaught of an unexpected fight for survival. We were destined to search for that convenience. We were also destined to search for connection. We have abnormally large brains. Compared to the next largest headed species and relative to the size of our body, our brains are 50% larger. A particularly large element of our brains is our neocortex, and this is the part of the brain that deals with social connections. Back in the early 1990s, anthropologist Robin Dunbar discovered a striking relationship between the size of a species neocortex and the size of group that they were destined to reside in. For us humans, Dunbar number says that we should be in groups of 150. Now, if we look back through history, this number has always been the case. From the earliest settlements of man until just a few centuries ago, most humans lived within groups of 150. In today's world, the average number of wedding guests is 150. Companies and squadrons of the world's armies generally comprise of up to 150 soldiers. And even in our new GI world, even with the vast capability that we have to connect to thousands of people, 
the median number of friends on Facebook amongst its billions of users is just 200. You see, even in this world with all this opportunity for us to connect on a global scale, our brains just can't cope. They want to pull us back to that small, safer, connected community that they knew and they want felt safe in. So what does this mean for the future? What kind of world are our kids going to grow up in? And what do we all need to be successful and help them be successful? Well, the great leaders of the future will not necessarily be the ones with the best products or the best ideas or even the best tech. They will be the ones that help us live in this new world of convenience and connection. Convenience may yield short wins, but overruled by our neocortex, we will always need to strive for that connection. The reason Airbnb is so successful is not just because it's a global individual proposition for the room providers. It's because it's about making friendships. People return from their stay and share stories of the lovely owners they met and how wonderful it was to stay in their homes. Airbnb empowers us to live in the GI world but feel like we're back in the old LO world, feel like we're connected again. And that's what people come back for. Elon Musk, well, he doesn't sell cars. He actually sells a sense of connection. He empowers people to feel part of global world that they're living in. People buy Teslas because they want to show that they care about the global environment and they want to be part of a progressive future. And in doing that, they become connected to a group of like-minded people that have the same beliefs. It's the leaders that emotionally or physically connect us to this new global individual world, which will be the ones to watch. So technology has changed the world. Burying our head in the sand and hoping it's going to go away is pointless. As humans, we were destined to progress. But fundamentally, we will still be humans. We'll still be managers of the same bodies and brains that we were born into. Our brains that have taken millions of years to evolve are not just going to change overnight. So we're going to need to learn to adapt. If you want to be a great leader of the future, then what you need to do is empower your other human beings to find ways to embrace the new power and perspective they have. Make it convenient, but above all, make sure you help them find ways to feel connected to their other human beings. It really is a whole new world of connection. Thank you.